Whew. All right, finally doing this style of helmet effect. Ooh. I don't feel so good. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And ever since Infinity War came out, my comment section has been a cavalcade of spoiler requests. So I thought I might take one on and avoid spoilers altogether. So here's some requests that I've heavily edited. So an absolute crapload of you have asked for an Avengers Infinity War disintegration effect. So that's what we're doing today. But there's one caveat. I'm not going to say where this effect is from, what it's actually about, or give you any context whatsoever. We're just going to do the effect. So there's no spoilers here, guys. You're welcome. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need a copy of Trap Code Particular. There's no two bits about this, guys. This is one of the best particle simulation softwares out there, and it's fantastic, and I used it for this effect. So, if you click the link in the description, you can grab a demo of that right now. You'll also need to shoot your actor on a green screen pretending to disappear, or you can just shoot them normally and rotoscope them out. I shot mine on a green screen because I'm far too lazy to rotoscope. I mean, ain't nobody got time for that. Oh my god. <sighs> Alright, enough of that. Let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects, and as you can see, I have my shots set up in a comp and ready to go. I've got my footage already keyed out, as you can see right here, and of course my background layer is down there as well. So our first step is going to be an easy one. We're just going to duplicate our actor footage like so, and then we'll just turn that bottom layer off. From there, let's right click that top actor footage, pre-compose that, and call it Dust, and we'll make it 3D. We can then open this bad boy up and begin the fun. Firstly, let's head up to Effect, Color Correction, and add ourselves a Photo Filter. Let's then select that to a custom color, and choose ourselves a nice, rich brown. There we go. We'll then crank that bad boy all the way up to 100. Next, let's head back to Color Correction again, only this time we'll grab a tint. Let's then set the black to a darkish gray, and this is pretty good. Let's then set the amount to around 50%. That gives our character a dusty, ash look. Perfect for driving our particle sim. Next up, we need to map out a mask path to show the particles where to come from. This once again is easy, but you can make this animation as complex as you like, gang. It's simply mask animation. For the purposes of the tutorial, I'm gonna make this animation a relatively easy one. So let's grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask down the bottom of your comp like so. It doesn't really matter what the shape looks like as long as it's off screen. We'll then hit M on the keyboard and hit the stopwatch on mask path. From there, we'll scrub forward on the comp and then move up the mask. Maybe adjust the shape a bit like so, revealing part of our actor. Mm, about this amount's good. Let's keep going. We'll skip ahead again, adjust the position and the shape of the mask. I mean, guys, you can do this as many times as you like until you reach the top of your actor's head and your mask goes off screen once more. Let's then hit F and feather this one out around 50 to 75 pixels. Now if we check out a preview, you can see what we're going for. You get this kind of band wave that travels up our actor's body. But like I said, you can make this as complicated as you like guys. You could maybe start on one of the arms or whatever you like. It's totally up to you. Just go nuts. So what's next? Well. That's the hard part done. Yeah, you heard me. That was the hard part. It's particle time now. Now the particles do take some time to set up, but it's not hard. Once again, I will say you do need a copy of Trap Code Particular for this effect. It just doesn't work without it. So let's head back to our original comp. There we are. Let's then head up, add a new solid, make it black, and call it Emitter. All in lowercase, just like me, and hit OK. We'll then head up to Effect, find RG Trap Code, and add Particular. 
From there, it's time to tweak a crap load of settings. Firstly, let's set the amount of particles all the way up to a whopping 600,000. Now, if you're like me, you might want to lower your render quality to quarter while we do the rest. I know that's what I'm doing. Next, let's change the emitter type to layer. And before we meddle further, let's get those layer settings sorted. Firstly, we'll change the layer to our actor pre-comp layer, and then the layer sampling to particle birth time. This tells Particular to use our mask animation as the place of the particle birth. From there, let's head back up to our emitter settings. We'll set the velocity to 100, hit the stopwatch, I'm then gonna head about a quarter of the way into our comp here, which is around about the halfway point in my actor keyed footage, and then set it to 200. That way, our particles gain momentum as they emerge. Let's then crank the velocity random up to 100, the velocity distribution to say five, and the velocity from motion to 20. This gives us a bit of variation in velocity. From there, we'll move on to our particle settings. Let's set the life to around three seconds, the life random to five, and then we'll set the particle type to cloudlet. Next, we'll set the cloudlet feather down to five, the size to around 3.5, and then we'll crank that size random up to 100 just for a lot more variation. We'll then click the drop down arrow on opacity over life, and from the menu, we're gonna select this ramp here, which will make them slowly fade away over time. Let's turn on our actor layer and check out a preview of that so far. Still some work to do, gang. Let's get back into it. Moving on down to shading here, and let's head down and turn on Shadowlet for main. We'll then tweak some settings here. I'm gonna increase the opacity to six and adjust the distance to 125. This gives our particles a bit of depth and separation by self-shadowing. Next up, physics. I'm gonna set the gravity to minus one. I'll then drop down the air menu and turn the spin amplitude up to 15, the spin frequency to 9.1. I'll then set the wind Z to say minus 50, then set the wind Y to minus 75. And for me, since I want my particles to shift off the screen to the right, the wind X is gonna be my main source of wind. So let's make sure we're on the first frame. Mm -hmm. We'll then hit the stopwatch on wind X, keeping it at zero. I'll then once again, head to around about a quarter of the way through my comp or the halfway point of my footage. And then I'm gonna crank it up to around 245. I'll then head to a few frames after my footage has ended and crank that up to 515. And that'll really blow those particles away. Now just for a bit of variance, let's head down to turbulence field, down to effect position and hit the stopwatch on frame one. And then we're gonna head to the end of the comp and crank that up to 50. This just adds a little bit more movement to the particles as they blow away. And just it just makes them look just a little bit cooler. All right, we're in the end game now, guys. Let's head to rendering, drop that down and turn motion blur on. If we check out a preview, that's our particles done, guys. Now gang, do feel free to really experiment with all the settings that I've just gone through and find out what works for your shot, because that's exactly what I did. I played around for a couple of hours, I got the settings I wanted and I talked about them with you. All right? Okay, we have one step to go, gang, just one. Let's tackle this actor layer right down here. At the moment, he's just standing there, not disintegrating, being a bit of a stick in the mud, if you ask me. So let's fix that. Let's head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a rough mask around the entire actor, like so. And then we're gonna hit the stopwatch on mask path, right here. After that, we simply need to head along the timeline and adjust the bottom part of our mask to follow along with our particles. Basically, we're hiding our mask animation underneath these particles to sell the illusion that our actor is fading away. And there, all done. If we check out a preview, our actor now disintegrates away. And that, my friends, is another effect. Mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Whew. All right, finally doing this Star Lord helmet effect. Ooh. I don't feel so good.
So guys, that's my take on the disintegration effect from Avengers Infinity War, which I'm not telling you where it is or what it happens or what it has to do with anything. I'm just presenting my version of an effect from a movie. And as you know that saw, it is pretty easy once you just work through all those little steps in particular. Now guys, before I go, I just wanted to mention one thing because I'm wearing this t-shirt on purpose. The boys over at Action VFX have recently discounted every single one of their products by 50% forever. So there's no better time to head over to actionvfx.com and pick up your stock footage. They have a massive amount of stock footage from fires, guns, explosions, pretty much anything that goes boom is on offer there, plus a whole lot more. And hey, if you click the affiliate code down in the description or use this code right here, you're not only helping to support film learning, but you're also getting a cool product as well. So once again, guys, win-win all round. So guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Film Learning. If you did enjoy the video, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join the other 95,000 that have also done that. And turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single Film Learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got a playlist right here. And I've got my social media crap above my head with the Facebook and the Twitter. And until I see you again, guys, keep learning.